This recipe is a bit of an ugly duckling because you can take the ugly oxidized cauliflower from the store and turn it into something beautiful instead of food waste. Let's spend time with Marco, but the food is the star, so it's probably worth sharing. Hello, I'm Marco and welcome to my home kitchen. Today I want to show you how to make a whole roasted cauliflower, which doesn't sound special, but it is one of the best dishes I've ever had in my life. I have dreams about this cauliflower. It is cauliflower, olive oil, and salt. That's everything that's in it. And it tastes so good. You might be thinking this sounds really simple, but there's a couple of techniques that make this one of the best dishes ever. When it comes to picking cauliflower for this recipe, you want a nice, large, full cauliflower that when you slice off the bottom, it's gonna sit up straight. You can see my cauliflower has some oxidization. So that's just from the cauliflower being exposed to air, it's turning brown. That's exactly the same thing that happens when you slice an apple. So it's perfectly edible, there's nothing wrong with it, it's only cosmetic. Because I'm going to roast the whole cauliflower, it's all going to turn brown anyway. So it doesn't matter, and this is a great time to pick up some ugly produce at the grocery store that would otherwise go to waste. If instead the brown spots are dark, almost black, and mushy, that means the cauliflower is starting to rot. So you can cut that part off. Because this recipe is using the whole cauliflower, you can include the leaves. The leaves are fully edible. They're, they taste kind of like cabbage. One of the tricky parts about this is knowing how much water to put in here so it doesn't overflow once you're at the stove. My trick for doing this so I don't make a mess is you put the cauliflower in the pot. You then fill your pot with cold water all the way to the top. I'm just going to remove the cauliflower and take the water over to the cooktop. While the water comes to a boil, one of the things you want to do is cut the base of the cauliflower so that it's uh, perpendicular to the top of the cauliflower. That way it's going to sit flat once you put it inside of the uh, baking sheet, uh, like you can see here. You want to add a couple of tablespoons of salt to your water. Uh, it should be very heavily salted, salty like the sea. And that's going to season the cauliflower all the way through as it cooks in the boiling water. And that's really important to the whole flavor development of this dish. Once your water comes to a boil, you want to put your whole cauliflower in. Uh, put it in with the stem side up. That way the majority of the cauliflower will stay submerged. This is now going to uh, cook in the boiling water for 10 to 15 minutes. So it's been about 10 minutes and what you can do here is poke the cauliflower with a fork and the fork is going straight in. Um, there's no resistance, it's very gentle, but the cauliflower is not breaking up. The next step is critically important to getting the right texture for the cauliflower. What you're going to need is a spider strainer and a uh, wire rack. You want to lift the cauliflower out with the spider strainer and let any excess water drip into the pot. You don't necessarily want to pour this into the sink because it's just going to be very heavy and you might damage the cauliflower, especially if it got very soft. Next, you want to set it on your wire rack. Once you set it on the wire rack, you can see there's a tremendous amount of steam coming off of it. You want to leave this for a solid 30 minutes for all of this steam to evaporate. If that steam doesn't evaporate, you're going to continue to steam cook the cauliflower in the oven, and that's gonna give it like a very mushy texture and it's not going to get brown. So you have to let as much water escape as you have patience for. It's been about 20 minutes. Uh, the cauliflower is cool completely to room temperature. So I'm going to move it to the baking sheet. You need three tablespoons of olive oil for the whole process, but you're only going to use one tablespoon now. So I have it measured out. I'm going to just use a basting brush to cover every nook and cranny of the cauliflower in olive oil. This is going to create a really nice crispy layer uh, once it goes inside of the oven. So uh, make sure you dab into kind of every exposed area that you can see and have access to. You can do this with your hands, but because the cauliflower is a little bit fragile at this point, it's a lot easier to do it with a pastry brush. 
Still have one and a half to two tablespoons olive oil left for finishing. The last step before it goes in the oven is to sprinkle everything in salt. And again, you're just trying to get every little area that you can reach. You don't want to oversalt, but um, to get kind of these undersides, you might have to throw the salt in creative ways. This is now ready to go into the oven and you want to put it in the oven at the highest temperature you can set it to. So for me, I'm using a small convection oven that caps out at 450. Uh, some home ovens go to 500 or 550. So use whatever's the top temperature. If you have convection, use it because it's going to help with the browning. The cook time is going to vary depending on your oven, the temperature and how big your cauliflower is. So it's going to take between 25 and 45 minutes but you want it to get this deep, golden, somewhat charcoal-y uh, appearance, which is going to be where all of the flavor comes from. So the cauliflower's had a chance to cool. You want it to cool down slightly before you move it because it's going to be very fragile at the beginning. Um, you can serve it warm, you can serve it cold. It will be great regardless. When you are finished, you take the remaining two tablespoons of olive oil and drizzle that over top. And this is one of those opportunities where if you have a good olive oil you've been saving, this is a really great showcase for it because it's one of only three ingredients in the whole recipe. You can slice this like steaks. You can cut it up into small pieces. It's amazing just on its own, but you can complement it with some other flavors. So it's really good with hummus, with like a lemony yogurt dip, Funnily enough, in the cookbook I got this recipe from, it's so poorly laid out that there's a recipe for aioli here, and then there's a recipe for the cauliflower, but it just says cauliflower at the top. So the very first time I made this, I made garlic aioli to go with it, which is really delicious and a great combination. Time to give it a taste. I'm going to cut one little piece off here. You can see it's very tender. It uh, cuts incredibly easily. This piece is too big. There we go. It, it tastes so good. And one of the reasons for that is because you are boiling it in heavily salted water, the salt kind of counteracts the bitterness that happens in cruciferous vegetables. So instead it's very sweet, it's creamy, it's mellow. It has a great texture because the outside is kind of crisp and char, but it's soft and creamy in the middle. I love this recipe. I hope you make it. I hope you love it too. Give ugly produce a chance. Save it from the landfill. Turn it into a whole roast cauliflower. It is extremely delicious. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. It really means a lot. And I will see you in the next video. So it's probably worth sharing.